Werbung. Welcome to my new video that is a follow-up on how to improve your aiming in War Thunder Ground Forces. This time I only have two tips for you, because the second tip is a little bit more difficult, but very cool to know. So let's start with the easy one. Tip number one, use grid cell size. With the update new power, Gaijin implemented the grid cell size on the minimap. Now you can assume the distance to the enemy, especially on big maps. When an enemy is highlighted on the map, or when you know where the enemy is due to a special characteristic of the map, you can now assume the distance by the grid and don't have to measure it. Like in this situation, I don't have the rangefinder upgrade to measure the distance with this tank and my crew isn't trained very well. But with the grid cell size I can add up the meters and shoot at this already destroyed tank at 1500 to 1600 meters and the sparks indicate that it was a hit. And now buckle up for the advanced tip. Stadia metric range finding. Have you ever wondered what the horizontal scales are for when you are in the sniper mode? With this you can calculate the distance to an object. The numbers on that horizontal scale are called mils. The following informations are just for the better understanding. I will simplify the mechanic in the end, so stick with me because this can be really cool. If you know the size of a target, the length or width, you can calculate the distance with this horizontal scale. Just divide the size of the object by the mils. To define the mils, you point your crosshair at the center of the object, like in this situation where I point at the center of the hull. You don't have to consider the gun. Here we have 8 mils to the left and 8 mils to the right. Make sure to add up those numbers, so in total we have 16 mils. Every unit on the scale equals 4 mils. You also have this scale in the binoculars, but unfortunately just without numbers. For example, in this situation we have 4 mils to the left and 4 mils to the right. In total 8 mils. And we can assume the mils between the scales, like here where we have 2 mils to the left and 2 mils to the right. So in total 4 mils. We also can do this from the front. We just have to center the hull of the tank again. Ok, now we know how to define the mils. To calculate the distance we just need the length or width of a target. And here it becomes difficult. You can check out every length and width of the enemies you encounter if you want to or just use some average sizes. Most of the tanks have a width of 3 meters and a length of 6 meters. And since the shells allow some tolerance, this works very well. And most of the time we encounter enemies that face their front or their side to us. When you see an angled tank, you can adjust the height a little bit, but most of the time we don't shoot on angled tanks because the shell might bounce. Ok, now we know how to define the mils and the length and width of an object. The distance is calculated by dividing the size in millimeter by the mils. For example, when I see a tank from the front and it's in between 4 and 4 mils, I divide 3000 millimeter by 8. This equals 375 and the distance is 375 meters. When I see a tank from the side within 4 and 4 mils, I divide 6000 mm by 8 mils and we get a distance of 750 meters. That is very cool, but also very impractical, because I don't have the time to calculate all the distances. And here comes the trick. The horizontal scale is the same for every tank we use and we also consider the same length and width for every tank we encounter. With this we can very easily set some standard ranges and learn them. And we don't have to consider ranges above the 4 mils mark on each side because in this situation the tank is very close and we just can shoot at it. When we see an enemy tank from the side 
and it perfectly fits between the 4 and 4 mils mark. The range is 750 meters. Go for 800 and you should be able to hit it. When there is some free space to the 4 mils marks, go a little higher for 1000. And when there is even more space and the target is at the half of the 4 mils marks to each side, go for 1400 to 1500 meters. When we see an enemy tank from the front like this and there is a little bit of free space between the 4 mils marks, go for 600 meters. And when there is even more space and the target is at the half of the 4 mils marks to each side, go for 750 meters. When the target is even below that, go for 900 to 1000 meters. When you see the tank from the front and it fits perfectly between the 4 mils marks, it is 375 meters. Well, that was a lot of theory, but how is that helpful in the game? I know we can train our crew to measure the distance and some tanks have rangefinders. But first you have to train your crew and research the rangefinder. And the rangefinder is one of the last parts you can research. Once you got used to the six distances I talked about, or even more, you don't have to measure the distance anymore. You can react and shoot faster when you detect an enemy. Before I used this, I had to measure the distance. That took a while and sometimes the enemy was gone before I even knew the distance. Now I just peek out of the cover when I detect an enemy, adjust my gun and shoot. Of course there also might be some errors. Some tanks may have less than 3 or 6 meters, or tanks are angled, but you get used to it and can adjust your aim. So far I really did great with the stadiometric range finding. And even when a shot just hit the track, I adjust the distance for the next shot. I think it might be a little different for Russian tanks because they use the Warsaw Pact mill that is a little less than the NATO mill. I put the mills and ranges in the comments so you can copy them. I just figured out how this works but already wanted to share it with you. I hope you liked the video and to see you in game soon.